Hi, Michal. Um, great. I'm I'm speechless. Just uh, forget the, the pictures of the bottle. Just looking through these pictures that you've uploaded for us. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. Okay, we'll get to them in a minute. Really, really excited. Um, now the boring stuff. <laughs> the bottle. Okay, so let's have a look. Should we do it? Let's let's do it. Let's just look first thing. So look, I see straight away that the um, you didn't change the shutter speed here. So the 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 assignment was to change all of the variables. So let's the, also I can see there's a little bit of difference here. Anyway, either way, let's see what happens. The point is to really get to understand it. And um, let's see. I hope you do. Let's write this down. Write with me. Okay. So we've got we're at f two. And we're at ISO 800. Okay, and we're at a 1 1 25th of a second. Okay, so now I've written it like this. Okay, and now I'm going to draw arrows here, here, and here. And you can see that we're now going to work out what we changed everything to. So the 1 1 25th, this is picture A, and let's look at picture B, okay? This is A, the big bottle, and B is the smaller bottle. Okay, so we changed from, we've written this down, 1 1 25th, F2, 800 ISO, to we change, we didn't change the shutter, it's still 1 1 25th, yep, to F4, to 3200 ISO, now F2 to F4, remember the trick with Aperture to see how many stops you changed is by remembering that you, when you double the number, it's two stops. It's not one stop, like in like ISO, 100 to 200 is one stop, 200 to 400 is one stop, 400 to 800 is one stop. In Aperture, um, two to, um, it's really, we go from um, two to 2.8, sorry. 2 to 2.8 is a stop, and 2.8 to 4 is a stop. So 2 to 4 is two stops, okay? So Aperture works in double numbers. It's just a trick to remember. So you went from F2 to F4, which means you contracted, you constricted your Aperture by two stops, okay? So that's minus 2. Now you went from ISO 800 to 3200, so that's 800, 1600, 3200. You added two stops. So... You took away two with your um, aperture and you added two with your ISO, which means you have ended up back at the correct exposure. Okay, excellent. You didn't change the shutter speed though. So now this one I fear is actually a little bit um, is a little bit off. And it let's see, let's actually see because it can sometimes be that the light in the room. We'll do this quickly. Um, so the first picture is B, which is a 1, 1, 2, 5 of F4 at 3200. Okay, let's change this to the next picture, which is a 1,000th of a second at F2 at 6400. I'll work this out quickly. So 1, 1, 25 to, uh, to 1,000 is 250, 500, 1,000. So that's you took away three stops, minus three. Four to two is you added, um, you went from 40, that's you added two stops, that's plus two. And 30, excellent, 3200 to 6400 is plus one. So even though these pictures didn't look the same, it was to do with the light flickering or something like that, probably to do with the light flickering at that moment. But excellent, you did it, perfect, perfect, fantastic. Okay, so you seem to be understanding photography. Excellent, okay. This is the foundation for, um, well, potentially you could make some money out of this. This is great. Okay, we've got, um, what's your, let's just look at your stats. I think that's very good. I think that's perfect. The fact that you're at 4.5 means that you've got both the boys in focus. That's great. Um, you're at 400 ISO, allowing you a 320th of a second. And although we've said a 250th of a second, um, is like the benchmark even faster. I really, I feel very comfortable when I'm at like a 500th or a 640th of a second. Then I can completely forget. Even at a 250, you have to be aware. So 320 is perfect. These are perfect, perfect stats. And I'm, 
I'm proud of you. You're using very basic equipment and you are taking excellent pictures. Beautiful composition here, both on the thirds. You've got this line on the third. You've got interest and color. You've adhered to the rules of keeping the background. I don't even know if you've learned this yet, but keeping the background a similar exposure um, and a different color. This is great. The light on the kids is beautiful. Um, everything is structurally, emotionally. Um, it's just a, it's a great image. A lot of distinction, even though you're F4, um, F4.5, there's still enough. It's still blurred enough. Um, could it be improved by being a little bit, to, add, to open up your aperture to 2.8 could be that, um, could be that they'd still be in focus and you'll get a slightly softer background, but this is excellent, excellent, excellent. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful children. Um, the light is acceptable on their faces. It's not very, it's not flattering. Like it's, it's nice. It's not acceptable. It's more than acceptable. It's nice. Um, the, the composition, so it could be, this is a little distracting. It could maybe be, maybe, I would have to see, but for him to move forward onto the seat a little bit further and to him come away and then to crop this part of the bench out so the picture would be, I mean, he'd be further away from it because the thing is that it's actually jostling this this graphic here is jostling for your attention a little bit so i think for this picture don't get me wrong it's a, it is actually quite a beautiful piece of graphic but this picture doesn't deserve a, a piece of graphic this picture should be um should just be complete focus on the children stats are i wouldn't be at 800 i would be at probably a 400 or even a 200 you could be uh, a one two a one two five thousandth of a second is not necessary you're not gaining anything from being that fast and you would be losing a bit of quality from your iso so the best option would be to be at 400 or even 200 iso then you could drop down for and make that a little slower okay um great again beautifully beautifully seen background the light works for the background like it's very difficult sometimes to get the right background because you're also jostling with the light so sometimes the light needs you to be shooting in one direction but the background looks better than behind you so um you've worked out a great place here this is great this is this is um this is viable commercial photography excellent really excellent okay so i'm going to be very critical now because you're doing so well um, the Lightroom, the post job has been a bit obvious. It could be that it wouldn't be noticed so much um, by your client, but I can definitely notice it. It's it's too obvious. Um, so this is also distracting a little bit. The girl's look isn't isn't. It would be if it was. It's a little bit like um, fearful or something like that. No, it's not like a nice look that we're we're enjoying looking at. I'd crop maybe slightly off here. Um, Let's keep going. This is the picture that I wanted to talk about. This is absolutely beautiful. This is such a sophisticated um, sensitivity to the to the energies of the image. We've got this this a beautiful little girl. She's looking off to the left. Okay, this is obviously our point point of entry. We're looking. She's looking off to the left. Yeah. However, there's an energy going this way with the with her body moving this way, and this um, element, the table here which actually intersects with the with the edge of the canvas, which creates all kinds of interesting things. But it creates basically a strong energy moving that way. And we have a, a very strong energy moving that way. But this is, this is actually graphically a very, very strong energy. The fact that it's touching the edge of the canvas and it creates the look that she has is a, like, um, you're filling the word for that. How would you, what word would you use to describe that look? Um, uh, very peaceful. And it's, it's like, it's a, it's very peaceful. Okay. There's many, you could read into it many beautiful words, but it's very peaceful. That's number one. Um, but there's an edge as well. The way she's holding her arms, um, the, the, the graphic with the hair, etc. these strong lines create edge. Um, the triangle that she is, uh, that she's creating all creates, uh, very heavy dynamic energies and it pulled just because of this pull like that, the image is, uh, it's just very, it, it really satisfies everything that we need. The subject pops out beautifully. Um, I'd maybe just 
slightly shave off a teeny little bit. Maybe one sec, let's have a look. Oh. Um, one moment, lift this a little bit higher. Maybe shave off a teeny bit. I think we'll look into this in Lightroom. Um, although you're, you're moving forward with Lightroom as well, which I really appreciate. Another nice picture, graphically very nice. It's I, I would actually take this further in Lightroom because we don't have a face in this picture. So remember, when we don't have faces, faces can hold uh, a great face, can make up for everything else being rubbish in the picture. When you don't have a face, the graphical elements need to be super, super amazing, okay? So it could, I mean, you really have got the, the elements here. You've got this, I'm just, I'm just, this you could take into Lyrum. You know what I think? I think this is such a beautiful picture that I'm, I just, I love it as it is, okay? Maybe you could just brighten the eyes of teeny a little bit. Um, oh, let's take this one into Lyrum and I think I will show you hopefully what could be done. Maybe, let's see. bring this picture in so this is the the picture is the picture is nice I do like the elements but let's see to, to pull it out further we're gonna be using a lot of clarity okay and we're gonna be in the world of our brush tool one second so let's put up the clarity a little bit and now let's bring this out okay that's great now I also want to bring out I'm gonna do a new one here because I'm gonna make this brighter as well a little bit to allow our child, our subject to pop out again. I'm just thinking in my in my mind right now, I am just thinking the word um, contrasts, um, just energy. Everything should be heavy, heavy energy. Let's see. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that really makes a difference. Okay, I want to now do another one over here. This time we're going to use clarity. Yeah. I'm gonna brighten this as well, so let's I'm just gonna brighten this area a little bit to again pop it out further from the tree. Do you see how far we're going? Like how far from the actual? I mean, I'm already working on a picture that you edited yourself, so we're just we're really moving far. I want to also get rid of this area, but I don't want to crop it, so I'm going to use my um, so my gradient tool. Excuse me. Okay, I don't usually use this tool, but it is a cool tool. I'm just going to drop the exposure a drop. There we go. So these legs, we're not going to be losing energy now through these legs. That's excellent. And I think, one second, this is just such a special picture now, one second. Um, where's the background? Here, let's open up the shadows a little bit um, and I think some contrast okay um, here we go and one last final touch is just to shave a little bit off the composition over here. It could be, um, it could be maybe uh, well, that's such a beautiful image. I think we're just going to actually put a little vignette as well. Yeah, well, it's just a beautiful, beautiful image. Um, it could be that in Photoshop, if you really wanted to get crazy, to just pull out, pull this side a little bit longer um, that might just ease it up a little bit um, but amazing I'm really impressed and um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what you do for us next week okay Michal thank you again